Copper heat pipes have become prolific to a point of finding their way into even small form factor devices, but are well known for prevalence within CPU and GPU coolers. A copper heat pipe is one of the most efficient means of sinking and dissipating heat, doing most of the work through internal phase change of liquid to gas as the fluid evaporates and condenses within the vacuum sealed copper tube. Today we're looking at Cooler Master's in-house copper heat pipe factory in Huizhou, China, where more than 50,000 copper heat pipes are made every single day. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Mastrop and Hi-Fi Man HE4XX Planar Magnetic Headphones. The HE4XX headphones focus on high quality audio listening experiences with comfortable foam cushions for the ear cups. Comfort is also ensured with a leather covered spring steel headband allowing flexibility and durability against bends. These headphones are capable of delivering big sound for audiophiles while being positioned competitively in price. Learn more at the link in the description below. Cooler Master's heat pipe manufacturing is about as close to the source as it gets. First, the company buys the copper from a supplier and gets it rolled into a tube. The first machine that we saw in the line uses a set of two platforms to exchange heat pipes from one position to the next. At this point, they're really just copper tubes with holes at the end, and that's it. The center platform lifts and moves the 2B heat pipes while the outer one holds them in place. Neither side of the heat pipe is sealed as it enters this machine, but that changes as the pipes progress through it. Once in place, the machine moves a rotating bit inwards to shrink the heat pipe and create a closed end on one side, while the other end of the machine pushes the pipe into the rotating bit. An arm at the top pushes down lightly to hold them in place, and then they're rotated out and dropped into a bit. Once the copper has been rolled into a tube and sized, the heat pipe is brought to a machine that fills the pipe with sintered copper powder. There are multiple types of copper heat pipes, but the most commonly known ones are sintered, mesh or weave, grooved, or a composite of two approaches, with the composite pipes being the most expensive and the most thermally effective. Today we're following the manufacturing of sintered heat pipes, which bake a copper powder to the inner walls of the heat pipe to expand surface area and guide capillary action. This approach uses more copper than a mesh heat pipe, and so is more expensive to manufacture than just mesh. The machine containing the pipes hold about 48 at a time, with multiple of these in use, and dumps copper powder from a container above. The machine then shakes the copper powder into place, thus compacting it into the tube. Excess spillover lands in a bucket for reuse, and so it can be sort of recycled. If we were watching mesh manufacturing, what we would see would be an insert by hand instead of using this machine step where a pre-made mesh can be stuck into the tube and then it moves on to the next step. After the sintered powder finds its way into the heat pipe, factory workers transport the powder packed copper heat pipes to an oven. Because the heat pipes are made of copper and therefore good conductors, baking the heat pipes can prove challenging. The oven has to bake each of the 50,000 heat pipes per day for eight hours, running at 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius the entire time. The result of the baking process is sintered copper powder hardened against the inner wall of the heat pipe, something for which we have footage to demonstrate. If you try to scrape this off, you would really have to dig at it because it is hardened into the outer copper at this point. After a full day of baking in the oven, the heat pipes are moved to get soldered on one of the ends. The soldering machine uses what amounts to an ammunition magazine, except it's filled with heat pipes. It hops the pipes through the process. The machine can solder one pipe roughly every two seconds, again with multiple machines in use, and uses a set of two platforms to exchange heat pipes down the line. The arms actuate and push pipes through the stack, with an arm moving back into the magazine to fetch the next pipe with each successive solder. Once soldered, the pipes are allowed to roll into a receiving bucket, where they wait to be moved manually to the next step. At this point, there's a manual quality check to ensure the heat pipes look as they should, using reference materials to check the desired result. And if there are any bad heat pipes, they unfortunately can't be recycled. Even though these are copper, they're not pure copper. The heat pipes have too many chemicals in them, now that they've gone through some of these processes, and are impure, so they can't be reused. About 3% of the heat pipe materials end up going to waste, which against 50,000 per day, ends up being a lot of copper that unfortunately can't be salvaged. Next is the injection of liquid into heat pipes. 
Cooler Master made its own machines to handle this process, using simple principles of gravity to hold the liquid in the tube while it's injected. The syringe inserts a few droplets of distilled water into the copper heat pipe, and it really is just a few drops. If you were to turn the heat pipe over and attempt to empty it into your palm, you wouldn't even feel the liquid come out, if any does come out. It's that small of an amount of liquid, as space is still needed for the gases within the heat pipe. The heat pipe is next laid down in a bin that's tilted slightly downward, using gravity to ensure no loss of liquid while they wait to be transferred. The tube is moved by hand to another machine, this one responsible for vacuuming the air out and pinching the end of the heat pipe closed. Not all of the air is removed at this point, so it goes to another machine to further this process. The next machine heats the heat pipe up at the bottom. It's loaded by a technician manually, and heating it at the bottom forces the remaining air to go out of the top of the pipe. Via automation, it then vacuums and pinches the tube a second time, this time higher up, and then it cuts that section of the heat pipe off. All of the air is now removed from the heat pipe, leaving only a few droplets of distilled water and the sintered powder that's been bonded to the inside. Finally, the heat pipe can be soldered on the other end of the tube, sealing it completely into one straight copper heat pipe. This soldering machine, the final step, is the same as the earlier one we saw, and the heat pipe is now done and must be bent or shaped for the product. Cooler Master makes CPU and GPU coolers for silicon manufacturers and board partners and cooler manufacturers, so heat pipes of various types are in constant demand. Now that it's time to bend those heat pipes, there are two ways to do it. One is manually, sometimes used for low volume designs with specific bends, or if a machine is out of commission, and the other is by the more efficient automation approach. To get a feel for how manual bending works, Cooler Masters engineers gave us the hands-on experience alongside Brian from BPS Customs, and with our inexperience combined, we formed the world's slowest assembly line. The first step of the manual bending process is to face the crimped ends of the heat pipe toward the user, then insert two heat pipes at a time into the bending rig. An insert is used to hold the pipes in place, while the operator pulls a lever to effortlessly bend the tubes at the desired angle. Although it took us about 19 to 25 seconds to bend two heat pipes and pass them to Brian, it takes a skilled factory worker about eight seconds to accomplish the same work. Cooler Master gave us one of our heat pipes to take home, seeing as they probably wouldn't pass quality control, and the result is a copper heat pipe with a 180 degree bend, ready for use in a small tower cooler. Automation is more interesting and uses the same tools as the manual stations, but it's obviously more efficient. Cooler Master had three different types of heat pipe bending machines on display, with the first accomplishing effectively the same task as both Brian and we accomplished, except more competently, by using a template to bend the pipes and a grooved wheel to guide them along as they get bent a second time. A claw then grabs the pipes and moves them over a bucket, where it drops them for operator pickup. One of the machines is capable of more unique shapes to bend pipes multiple times for specific fitments, and this machine uses an accordion arm to push the pipes into the bend template, where the heat pipes are then bent and then moved to a bucket. All that's left now is the final quality check. Heat pipes are selected to be dipped into a tank of hot water, where operators expect to feel the heat pipe become hot very rapidly. If the heat pipe doesn't reach high temperatures in a specified amount of time, it may be defective and might need a secondary inspection. This is also where Cooler Master had some of its flattened heat pipes on display. Although the company prefers round heat pipes and its cooling products for improved performance, flat pipes can fill important roles in GPUs and notebook coolers where space is at more of a premium. That's it for this factory tour of a heat pipe factory at Cooler Master's headquarters in China. We'll have more of these coming up, so make sure you subscribe to catch those. You should also check out BPS Customs' video on the Cooler Master factories. We happen to align our trips for those, and we'll link that below. Otherwise, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.